Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox, Incredible Space Program 1.12. I've done a recent test with the Scramjet Aerospike and I have managed to bring it past Mach 7 with the Scramjet and subsequent to that test I have made further changes which I hope will get us faster and so I decided to make a video to report my findings. And the first finding is that the intake area doesn't seem to do what I thought it would do in the configuration files. Uh, you would think that, okay, so in the previous video we had trouble getting enough intake air, right? The scramjet kept saying, well, we don't have enough intake air. And the logical thing to do would be to increase the intake area, right? And there you get more intake air. Uh, it doesn't. <laughs> so, uh, sort of... Contrary to what you might expect, I decided to decrease the intake area. It still didn't change much. Uh, so uh, I decided to decrease it a lot for both the jet ramjet and the scramjet. And that produces less drag, of course. And in producing less drag, we need less thrust. And if you need less thrust, you need less intake air. And as a result, we can go faster basically so uh, everything had to do with decreasing the actual intake area and optimizing like that realizing this it has led me to believe that with the skylon we would get better performance if we also decrease the intake area there i should find the bottom limit of that uh, i was just sort of basing it on other things uh, and, you know, relative to how much thrust we're producing, given how much thrust we're producing, multiply the area that we need for other engines, and given that, put that area on. But that doesn't seem to be how it works at all. Now, it might be how it works in 1.8, where I tested the SR-72. Uh, there's been a version change here between the last time I was using a scramjet with the SR-72 slash Darkstar, that was in 1.8, I think, and this is 1.12, so things might work differently, but I didn't think they were supposed to. But anyway, this is what I've discovered, and we've managed to get going faster. However, uh, with it going faster, we seem to guzzle a lot of fuel. On the last test, the reason why I didn't get too much past Mach 7 was because we ran out of hydrogen. So, But I've reduced the thrust even more uh, given that test. So we'll see if that helps uh, with the gas guzzling. Uh, we do have a lot of room for extra hydrogen. If we take a look at the model in Blender, uh, so this is what it looks like in Blender. Uh, this, these aren't the proper textures. These are just sort of standby textures. Uh, but the volume that the hydrogen tank is taking up, that's the hydrogen tank, and it's mirrored usually. Right now it's not showing the mirroring, but uh, it's actually two tanks side by side is that area or volume there and then the oxygen tank is actually down here and very close to the center line uh, the center of mass I thought would be around here to around here somewhere in that area and we'll sort of you know mess around with it until uh, we get the re-entry right but that's the hydrogen tank and the cockpit area is just up front here you can see four seats actually side by side here and we could put another four seats and still have plenty of space there. So uh, we can't really extend this tank further forward because it gets too narrow. But we do have more volume here if we want to uh, add more tankage. And even as it is, uh, if we... Uh, it is mirrored. I don't know why it isn't showing the mirroring. But if we take a look at the volume here, that volume is uh, basically one million liters. And... If we go back to Kerbal, we've got 918,000 liters. So, I mean, inside you'd have some structure and stringers and that sort of thing. So, you can't use all of the actual volume. So, that's why it's like that. Anyway, so let's test it out. I haven't changed the mass of anything. Uh, it's all the same. And just for reference, when it's uh, empty, remember Skylon was like, uh, 20 to 30 tons. I forget the exact amount empty. We're 72 tons. So, I mean, I, I am properly estimating the extra mass of the scramjet. We could probably make this lighter. Alright? And, of course, the heavy air spikes in the back as well. So, we are not making it easy right now. We could probably make it easier. But, we'll go with this for now. 
and we will see how it works. Now, somebody had said to shut off the intake that we weren't using, and I decided that would be okay to do. It'll help on like the climb portion to not have the drag from the scramjet intake. Reducing the size of the intakes already solves some of that problem anyway. But the reason why I didn't close the intake, first of all, we had trouble with intake air, right? So it didn't make sense to close any available intake, but it doesn't seem like the scramjet intake feeds the jet ramjets anyway. Actually, by design, I had intended it to. Basically, that the scram jet scramjets uh, could get bleed air from this intake as well, because that would help, especially because they're over the wing, uh, sort of the the route here, and at certain angles of attack, uh, this intake might be blocked. So they should, especially at lower speeds, they'll be at a high angle of attack, so they'll need air from here until it gets to about Mach 1, in which case they'll be pointing more directly at the prograde vector or the velocity vector. So it was always supposed to have this open, and it's a scramjet, so mainly it's like pass, uh, having the air pass through anyway. Uh, but in Kerbal, things don't work out quite the way you want them to. So yeah, uh, as you can see right now, it says open intake because it's closed. So it's starting out closed and that'll give us less drag. Okay, I uh, restarted the flight because of some noise outside. Uh, it doesn't look like my throttle is working here right now, but we've got being set, ignition. I don't know why there's that secondary sound. We have to monitor everything. So let's bring it all up. It'll be very cluttered. But what can we do? We'll bring up the scramjet a little bit later. Okay, rotate. Oh. Wheels broke. Well, we are going very fast. Okay, we are off. So, yeah, the reduced intake area, and I suppose closing the intake as well, can give us a better climb rate. Ultimately, these intakes weren't very big to begin with, so when we do want to light the scramjet, they weren't really contributing one way or another, whether to drag or to the uh, air. I think I found a 45 degree angle to be okay with it now. Well, I reduced the thrust on the jet engines, so maybe 40 degrees would be better. The jet mode was overperforming, so I nerfed it. Okay, going to 30 degrees to accelerate past the speed of sound. Okay, well, less than 30 degrees. 30 degrees is with the higher thrust engines. I reduced their thrust by about 200 kilonewtons. There was another comment about the thrust vector from the scramjet engine. All I can tell you is that the scramjets are always underslung like this. They're never any other way. And aerodynamic bodies like this, they don't mind having the thrust vector off of the center of mass because they've got the lift vector as well. The rocket engine, of course, has to be in line with the center of mass, and it is. Uh, the three aero spikes are centered on the center of mass. Okay, I don't think we're gaining much more in jet mode like this, so... Switching to ramjet. Which again is less efficient, but... Note the prop requirement met 65% though. And what I've noticed is that the engine dies at 56%. So we'll have to be careful. But it doesn't seem to care about this intake at all. So right now we've uh, got the intake closed, right? I'm going to open it. 
and that doesn't change the prop requirement that much. And it also didn't seem to slow us down at this height, so it's not producing that much drag up here. I'll uh, close it again, just for formality's sake. Uh, and an action group. Okay, trying to avoid high dynamic pressure here. We're not accelerating that much. I'm going to bring up the scramjet, so open intake again, pin that, and we're going to thrust limit initially, and ignition. Okay, prop requirement met right now, but it's not providing that much thrust. And I'll go up. Okay, we it uh, looks like we can probably do Oh no, it's going down. Let's be careful here. Fifty-six percent is the limit as far as I'm concerned. We also have to pay attention if there's an overheating warning. Okay, we are past Mach 5, obviously. Okay, fifty-six percent like I said. I think we can shut off the engines, the jet engines, or ramjets at that point. Okay, we are accelerating just on the scramjet. And we can do 100% on the scramjet now. But we're not accelerating very fast. I'm gonna try and go higher so that we're not experiencing so much drag. But we have to worry about air too. And we're just losing liquid hydrogen. I could just make it more efficient. You know, maybe it's not 3,600 seconds. There wasn't up. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Wait, wait, we could shut down. Activate. Okay, wait, we recovered it. But, yeah. I, I don't have a way of deciding how efficient a scramjet is supposed to be so which would be related to also getting the thrust from the area of the intake oh oops doing that as uh, i uh okay we'll have to throw all down here but with the lower intake area it doesn't get as much drag as it used to we're just not accelerating fast enough, and as long as I have to keep throttling down because of the intake. So after this, we'll try one more test, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the amount of liquid oxygen we're carrying and increase the liquid hydrogen. And I'll see what extra volume we can add in the blender model, change the configuration file to add that volume, and carry as much as we can. And then see how fast we get. But once again, we seem to be getting up to Mach 7 and not much more. Okay, Mach 7.2 it was. Alright, so yeah. We are going to sort of redo this with a different fuel balance. But I'm not going to adjust the engines this time. I'll work on that separately. But we'll see what we can get just by reducing oxygen and increasing hydrogen. But uh, it's going to be a tough one. Okay, so I've added the extra tank. For some reason, the center mass and center lift aren't the same as what I thought they ought to be, but we'll deal with that later unless there's some tragedy. But yeah, we now have about 240,000 extra liters of hydrogen because of the additional tank put up front. And I've reduced the amount of oxygen. And I think we can get to a hydrogen amount of 350,000 liters or so and that'll be on parity with the oxygen so basically we should ignite the aero spikes at that point and we'll try to do that and see if it works out so we'll use the if everything goes well we'll use the scramjet up to that point and then ignite the aero spikes and right now we are lighter than we were before because we're carrying less of the oxygen by 50,000 liters or so and so that's a lot of our mass and otherwise the mass of everything else has not changed so let us take it outside and see how it goes 
Okay, here we go. We should be able to take off faster since it's lighter, but that's just a theory. <laughs> I don't know, I'll try pulling up and just sort of let it decide. Uh, it doesn't seem easier. You can certainly go up now, but yeah, it doesn't seem any easier for some reason. Go figure. Any hope that being lighter would give us extra performance is not turning out very well already, but we'll see. Okay, I think we'll need ramjet mode. Yep, here we go. Well, here we're accelerating better, I think. Normal precautionary thrust limiting for the scramjet. Okay, high dynamic pressure. We'll start going up a little bit more, but we're not accelerating very fast. Very much. And we've got stuff. All right, opening the intake and activating the scramjet. And pulling up. Up, 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 engine temp. Okay, switching off the jets and closing their intakes. So we're looking for 350,000 units of liquid hydrogen for when we ignite the rocket engine. Now our prop requirement is going down and we're getting too hot. Potentially as long as we've got a velocity down here of 2,800 that would be great. There is another mode for the ramjet. Uh, uh, not the ramjet, the scramjet. If we really don't accelerate, I'll try it. But it's a high power mode with less efficiency. This is about the height that the Dark Star was supposed to operate at. So this is not too unusual. It's just all the drag that we're getting here too. We need to be there though. So it's a toss up as usual. Mach 8. I don't think we gotta get too much more here, but I'll wait a little bit longer with the hydrogen. I don't know if uh, going from Mach 5 to Mach 8 is worth it though. We'll need to optimize this a little bit more probably. Alright, igniting the rocket engines. Pulling up. Okay, the scramjet is off. Now I'll close the intake. So, first time switching all the way through. We could maybe do with fewer error spikes. Oh, oh, that's too much. Maybe we have too much thrust like that. Start off like a thrust to weight ratio of 3. Of course, that was meant for carrying a heavier load of oxygen. We're carrying a lighter load of oxygen now. We might be able to carry more oxygen. We'll see how much uh, hydrogen we have left. And that would have given us more delta V. Now, of course, we don't just need to get to orbit, we need fuel to come back after that. At least 200 meters per second. Okay, well, 
We've got the surplus of liquid hydrogen there. Um, we are short about 500 meters per second. I don't know if the extra oxygen will help or whether it'll just slow down the scramjet. Um, maybe upping the scramjet thrust might be helpful. There's a lot of possibilities here. Or we could try the other mode too. That would potentially increase the thrust assuming it's configured properly. We haven't tried that at all yet. Okay, um, yeah, let me rebalance the oxygen and we'll try one more time. Okay, let's see, will this be the one? Here we go. And the intake is closed. So just up to 80% of our possible capacity of liquid oxygen. Last time we were carrying 70%. Just trying not to scrape that body flap. So yeah, the next thing I should probably do is actually look again at Skylon's intake and see if uh, it's producing too much drag. And maybe that's limiting its payload capacity since we weren't getting the specified payload capacity. I mean, we knew it created a lot of drag because... I mean, they create a lot of drag, just two intakes, but because of how it landed. Well, I'm not even concerned about the jet ramjets anymore. We're just gonna focus on the scramjet at this point. And we need the ramjets now. Per usual. Okay, we better flatten out here. The ramjets can't take too much less air. Hey, okay, opening the intake, the big intake. I think we should start up the scramjet now. Okay, switching off the jets and closing their intakes. Oh. We're losing speed too much. I am losing thrust too much. Uh oh. We went too high too fast. Okay. Now we're working. Staying a little bit lower is probably a better idea. Not go too much higher right now. I can get my exact heading there, 98.5. I'll just get Smart ASS ready. Okay, switching to Smart ASS. Okay, we'll try Mach 8.5. Actually, it's going a little bit slow. Let's go now. Okay. Four fifty five second ISP on the aerospace, by the way. We are in space. Okay, and shut down 236 by 141, a little bit tight there, but we have 103 meters per second left in theory, and we have made it to orbit with this finally. So, the scramjet air spike, 77 tons in orbit after taking off just a little bit over 300 tons. So, uh, take that from that what you will, but uh, yeah, 
we will continue thinking about this. Obviously, uh, not perfectly optimized. Uh, There's a lot of work to do, but uh, an accomplishment, if you will. Let's actually test the RCS while we're here. Oh, and the back RCS still needs to be separated off. Right now, only the front RCS works. Back RCS, I need to put it back onto the body so that it works. So right now, it's not going to turn very well. But anyway, they're firing. So, yeah. <sighs> All right. Well, that was a lot of fiddling around with stuff. And we'll see what I can make of this and Skylon, since I think I can edit that for the better. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.